Speaking of um, living in a democracy, I guess the other really big story this week was um, Joseph Coney Barrett is going to be uh, Donald Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and by all accounts will almost certainly be, um, you know, she will gain that seat. They will vote for her and then she will be on the Supreme Court for probably the next 60 years. But yeah, I mean, where, where, where do you want to go with uh, Coney 2020 Barrett here? I mean, it, it does seem incredibly bleak. I mean, because like, the idea that like, the Supreme Court is going to be mega throttled by like an insane, insane, like right wing minority. Uh, like, I mean, not the majority on the court, but representing a astonishingly small number of people who and again, no yeah. one no one's voted for any of these people. And they're going to basically throttle all law for the next 60, 70 years, most likely. Um, I, I don't know. know. I'm kind of you... taking a I'm kind of taking a, 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 a Zen approach to it, because the way I kind of think of it, uh, one way or another, her being on the Supreme Court and this new 6-3 majority isn't going to matter that much in the near future because either there will be some sort of meaningful political crisis caused by the now uh, completely uh, frozen gears of the government and like this new dominant minority that is literally making it, it makes it impossible to govern. Uh, and that's going to cause, that would either cause the Supreme Court to, uh, to, be, to lose its position as like the the veto point for, the final veto point for all legislation and programs or if that doesn't happen and we're in a situation where that court is still there we have other bigger problems you know mm -hmm. like it, like it's gonna that's only gonna be a tertiary uh, uh structural impediment to anyone not being put in turned into fucking dog food i guess just um the thing I've been most fascinated with is the um, it, it, it's the notorious RGB people and their their inability to metabolize what happened, or that they they they, they can't admit or allow them anyone to 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 openly state what is obvious and irrefutable that this is a situation we are in because of the rather selfish and irresponsible choice of Ruth Bader Ginsburg not to retire when it, she could have guaranteed that there would have been a liberal suited on, you know, seated to replace her. And th th these forms of denial take a couple of really interesting uh, avenues. And like the first of which is to pretend that it was it just thoroughly impossible for Obama to get anyone on the Supreme Court because of what happened to Merrick Garland. Like forgetting the fact that like Mitch McConnell took over the Senate in 2014 and that he got already to of his choice justices on the Supreme Court in an up or down vote. So they're just pretending that that, like, that would have been impossible. So to say that, oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah, just there's no way she could have retired and then just been replaced by someone who is, you know, uh, of a similar political point of view is one thing. And then the other thing is these people sort of like uh, saying that like there's no way she could have known that uh, Hillary Clinton would lose and that she would die, which is like, uh, you don't have to be fucking the amazing Kreskin to just like, okay, yeah, all of us, myself included, <laughs> thought there was no way Hillary Clinton was going to lose that election. But it's still a fucking gamble if you're in her point. If you're in her shoes, it's still a fucking gamble. And to be willing to make that gamble with the lives of like hundreds of, million peop hundreds of millions of people so that you can still have fun on your job seems pretty monstrous. Well, to me. I mean, but uh, also this idea that like she didn't know she could die. She's in her 80s and already had cancer twice. It's a pretty fucking fair, safe bet. I, I want to be fair to her. Look at the last 30 years of her life. It's not like there were any Republican presidents during that time. They never won. From 1990 to 2020, <laughs> basically no well, GOP presidents. I don't know. I don't know, Will. I mean, you know, when people retire, you know, they start to get weird. You know, they're like, you know, maybe sometimes they just start hanging around the office. You know, like, cause that's all they know. It's all you know what to do. You know, it's hard to like just take up new hobbies in your twilight years. You know, I mean, I don't, I, I don't blame her. I mean, I would have stayed on. It's fun. You know, it's a fun. It you get to hang out with like fun. It's you get fucking. No, boring. you get to hang out with your friends. They're like right, uh, Anthony Scal Scalia, and, Scalia yeah. and and Samuel Alito. Your you know your pals. You know your your crew, your gang, your entourage, whatever. Uh, you get to you know make the the decisions that. Are, are not subject to the evaluation of anyone above you. Uh, decisions, matters of, of life and death for millions and millions of people. Yeah, um, I think that's what it comes down to, Virgil, is that like she, she, she liked the juice too much to give it up. And, and, and like, yeah, it's cool. Because it's these good, people it's are gig. sickos. It's a good because gig. these people are fucking sickos. They're driven by, they're empty. 
they're driven by this need to this will to power. Okay, well here's totally the well, here's divorced the, from any fucking political uh, value system. So you would have retired. I wouldn't be if, on if the Supreme you, Court. Are you fucking kidding me? How would that ever happen? Virgil, if, if, I, if I was on the Supreme Court, I wouldn't be me. It's an absurd question. Okay, I don't know, dream, I'll, I'll dream answer big. the question. Dream big, man. I'll, Thank you, Will. I'll answer the question. Of course I fucking would have retired. Will. Of course I would fucking retire. And like uh, knowing the system that we live under where judges are appointed by the president and for life... And that, like, knowing full well that could either easily be another Republican okay, president well then, when I'm 85 years old. Do you think that, like, someone who actually cared about uh, protecting civil rights, protecting women's rights, protecting the, like, the, the laws and precedent that, that she supposedly, like, represents the best of America? Do you think that it's someone who actually cared about the people who adored her would fucking take that big of a risk with their lives? For what her you, own what, wait, personal you, fucking uh, edification. Well, what if you got replaced with Merrick Garland? Well, I mean, that would suck. I mean, first, yeah, of, all, would, first of all, hold on a minute. Why would that have to be the case? It's not like what the question of when she could have retired is obvious. Obama's uh, first two years because yeah. Democrats control the Senate and the presidency. No matter what happened in the future, if it changed, it would be for the worse. You either lose the Senate or... Or you lose the presidency. Either way, the quality of the fucking or the political uh, uh, reliability of the nominee is going to be lower. The best, the, see, oh, it's the single best spot. Holding out is pointless. You're not holding out for anything. You're only holding out for a likelihood of a worse situation exactly. with a worse nominee. Exactly. Like the longer it goes on, like the greater the odds of something of this terrible situation occurring, happening. And it's just. Once again, it's just another opportunity for everyone to relitigate 2016 because like there are people saying, well, you know, th th this reflects really badly on Ruth Bader Ginsburg that she would do this or like that she really should have done the responsible thing and retired when she had a chance. And then people are saying, oh, well, yeah, you didn't even vote for Hillary Clinton. And like, that's the reason that this is happening. And it's just like, if you believe that, shouldn't you be madder at Hillary Clinton for losing? You Ultimately, know, like, if you put all of your fucking hopes and like the one thing that this person could say that like actually had some truth to it is that like I'm the only thing that will stop, you know, the opus Dei people of prayer takeover of the Supreme Court. And they didn't even do that. They didn't even care enough to fucking seat a nominee when they had the fucking chance. Okay, so I mean, the point that I'm driving at is uh, for any of this to make sense, like any individual justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg would have to have a fealty to in, in a greater ideological project and would be able to to coordinate with the other the other uh, uh, like uh, the other institutions, uh, the other actors in this project. And I don't believe that the Democratic coalition, you know, either in 2014 or, or, or 2009 or whatever, represented a, a coherent and coordinated ideological project. Like that's my, you're not, absolutely not right. Yeah, no, you're correct. The right wing has. Yeah. No, the right wing. I don't understand that. The right wing understands. I don't understand what difference that makes, though. Because that doesn't change that. That doesn't change her incentive to drop out in the one period of time after I believe after she'd gotten a fucking uh, cancer diagnosis. Be because to 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 pull the ripcord. There was never going to be a better time. Because um, well, okay, I've been looking into a lot. Like, no, yeah, you're right that there would be no better time, and that it make no made no sense in any logical evaluation what she actually did but i've been reading a lot of liberal defenses of her i think they're very interesting they're very revealing uh you have the one side that says she needed to show sotomayor and kagan what to do like they like they, like, they, like, like they were sims like if you lock the door they would starve to death like oh no if, if rpg isn't around uh elena kagan's gonna walk into an empty pool and fucking she won't be able to get out because uh you know, Justice Roberts <laughs> took out the fucking ladder, but uh, it, it's Kagan and Sotomayor just like you know they they're 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 taking LSD for the first time and they need a sitter. Yeah, that's yeah, and that's like that's the farthest end of liberal delusion. That's just insanity, right? You don't even take it seriously. That's someone who's insane. They're never coming back. Go figure. It's very popular, but then you have the other end, and this is this one was very interesting to me. This is what I was going to say earlier. Uh, I guess it was so boring that I forgot in the second, but uh, it was someone who said, and I admired this because it was more honest than these other defenses. Oh, come on. Like you've never made a decision that you wanted to make for good reasons that ended up hurting people. And why did she make that decision? Because she wanted to inspire women by having her replacement picked by a woman. <laughs> and no, oh, that's idiotic. 
it's completely callous in the face of the suffering that her replacement is going to cause. It's playing a very high stakes game with a, a relatively low payout, the, depending on how you look at things. But knowing what we know about these people, could you not just see that being the reason she figured, eh, let's roll the dice. I what can't if, die, can I? Yeah. No, what if, if perversely all the, the notorious RBG lionizing of her bullshit, what if that, you know, puffed her up to the degree that she's like, well, I should stay on the court because I'm clearly inspiring all these people. Like, I can't just quit. No, I'm their no, hero. No, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, yeah, I, 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 no, hold on. I, I disagree with that because I don't think you need a bunch of mid-tier Jezebel writers to make a federal judge pompous. I think that's yeah. you already got. I think she. I think she also. Um, I think she purely resented those people. Like, yes, let's be honest. Really. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I really, agree with yeah. Felix. I, 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 think, think, I think. Think about. Think about. The extent think that about she was aware. Of, yeah. Hold on. What do you think she felt about being compared to a black rapper? Think about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I like to imagine. I'm not a Supreme Court watcher, but I like to imagine that you know, in all of her, uh, all of the opinions that she's been authoring, there have just been like little footnotes just alluding to the notorious RBG stuff and kind of subtly trying to say, Hey, please knock this shit off. Yeah. It's really, it's really dispiriting to me. I know. I'm, I, I agree with Felix. Like to the extent that she was aware of it at all, I think it probably deeply pissed her off. Mm -hmm. I think, I think she, she thought of, thought of it probably as disrespectful, but like as to her legions of adoring fans who made her into this pop cultural symbol, I mean, her own actions give the truth of how she really felt about these people, which are overwhelmingly young women which is that she doesn't give a fuck about them. Yep. If she did, she would have behaved responsibly or she would have understood or like what the right does, that they're part of a broader ideological project that is playing a long game to like change the law and, and culture of the United States, which means that when it's, you know, your time that you bow out and make sure that the president yeah. who you're, is in your corner fills the seat that you leave open, right? I mean, like the right doesn't fuck around with that. Like, I mean, they, they got stung once or twice with like, you know, Souter or a few of the other like Souter, Souter, yeah, like that that or you know, um, uh, uh, fucking Rehnquist or whatever. Like, you know, I mean, they they've got stung by Supreme Court justices that they've nominated and haven't hadn't turned out the right way. Like, uh, what's her name? Uh, when Bush nominated his like family lawyer to the Supreme Court, Harriet Myers, yeah. Harriet Myers, and like they <laughs> yeah. they sunk that immediately, not because she was ludicrously unqualified, but because she wasn't a fucking known quantity. She wasn't a sure thing. And they yeah. scrapped that and they got the fucking person that they knew was going to be like the 100 percent down the line federalist society, like turn back the clock in America to the 1840s person. Like, that's what they're going for. And, you know, like, you said, like I think you're exactly right. I don't think the liberals on the court or liberals anywhere in this country have any such notion that they were involved in a like a larger political project. And like, I think the evidence of that is that, like, what do they like about Ruth Bader Ginsburg? It's that she achieved individually yep. and got to the highest thing and, and it it's not just what, what the laws she passed or like laws that she stopped from passing it's that it's that she's there and achieved and that's why she can stay there until she's 80 fucking years 90 fucking years old uh, and, okay Whoop. what is the thing why did they call her notorious rbg did they call her that because she overturned things in a notorious way <laughs> did they call her that because she called she she set a bunch of amazing precedents because she swayed the court. No, it was her dissents. It's that she yeah. lost in style. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I want you just a little experiment, little experiment that I'm personally doing. I've, I've done it for a while. I follow someone. I'm not going to name him. He's from McConnell's team. He's not like a big Trump guy, but he's an operator and he knows what he's after. Uh, you can find someone similar out there. You can figure it out. Then follow somebody on the Democrat side of things, follow somebody from Schumer's team, you know, ex Offico, wherever, you know, fucking McCaskill, whatever, who gives a shit? One of those losers, someone who is high up a capo regime in the Democrat mafia. Compare, compare what you get there. You get somebody, I get this guy I follow from team McConnell. Very interesting. He never fucking shuts up about appellate court appointees about, you know, recess appointments. He's got his eye on the fucking prize. He's he's a very, you know, the world is a zero-sum place kind of guy. He's very, you know, ice in his veins. But he's after one thing, and that's even when the, they are, the game is over numerically, which, you know, it kind of already is. It's preserving this rule and preserving these laws 
the ones that the donors are paying for. The thing that will make him rich when he's an old man. You go to the Democrat side, <laughs> what do you see? Let's normalize masks. Let's normalize masks. Let's normalize masks. Or like, uh, look at Kamala wearing the shoes. Oh, what? Uh, what? What if? What if we? What if we appointed Michelle Obama to fucking ambassador to the UK? Just grab back all over the place. Cultural signifiers. They don't give a shit about any type of permanent rule or j planting their flag anywhere. They have the culture. That's where they're going to plant their flag and. Go figure with these fucking losers. They'll probably lose that, too. And, you know, like, uh, for, forever, like, you know, what they're really talking about is something like, you know, Roe v. Wade. Like, you know, will the legal right to an abortion, you know, be over, overturned in large parts of the country? I mean, it functionally yes. has already been overturned in large parts of the country through, you know, eating away through regulations that they don't really need to overturn it on, like, a state level. You know, like, it's just, like, there's just one abortion clinic for, like, you know, that serves, like, 100 million people in, like, large swaths of this country. Um, but, like, yeah, yeah, they don't care because they know for them, like, their personal rights and privileges are going to be pretty much well-preserved. And that, like, all the, all the other hard right-wing decisions that this court is going to hand down, like, there was a good article the other day about how basically it's just one of the Koch brothers got Kavanaugh across the finish line and they're going to do the same for Amy Coney Barrett because what they want to do is create like a pre-New Deal sort of gilded age regime of labor rights and like the untrammeled access to of money equaling power in our system of government. Do you think any of these people like working for Chuck Schumer give a fuck about that? No. When, no, well, they're the no, beneficiaries of the exact same thing that they're going to do. There are two payoff systems for people leaving the leaving high staffer positions or even just elected office in politics. One lane is lobbyist. You'll work about fucking 20 hours a week and you'll be a fucking millionaire. That is the, that is a very common path. I'd say almost every Republican takes that path and a lot of Democrats. But there is one lane that only exists for Democrats, and that is the path of entertainment. You write some fucking abominable script about, like, I don't know, a president who goes on OK Cupid. Or, you know, you consult for some dog shit <laughs> show. Uh, and you get in that position not by winning. Because these lobbyist positions, the Republicans give them out to winners. Guys who, even if they lost their election, they put a guy, uh, they put a fucking 24-year-old with an associate's degree on the bench. He's going to rule there for the next 100 years. The Democrats give that to their losers. Here, here, you know, you lost valiantly. Here, Take some of David Geffen's pocket change to write some fucking awful bullshit. We'll also make you a millionaire. But not because we give a shit about how you affected anyone's lives or any victory for our ideological point of view. It's because we celebrate someone who lost in style like you did. We know that you're a good person. That's all that counts. Republicans don't do that. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen with something like, you know, uh, ab legal abortion or Roe v. Wade, because I'd be I mean, I'm, I've, who, I mean, there's nothing I will put past them. But I think the smarter uh, apparatchiks in the, the pro-life movement understand that they don't really need to overturn Roe v. Wade to get most of what they want. And if they did overturn Roe v. Wade, it could provoke something that would lead to like an actual political backlash, because abortion is one of those issues in America with it. People understand or have an opinion about in a way that's not vague. It's not like ill-defined or they don't quite know what to believe or like if they could live with it, they could just sort of live with it either way. It's like it's a very either or issue that people feel very strongly about. But, you know, if they, if they do overturn Roe v. Wade, like you think that, that would dispense with the one thing that the Democrats have over you if you're not a right-wing person is that like we're the party that's going to defend legal abortion in America. But I think like the perverse way that the system works is such that like the more power that they cede to Republicans, the more the right wing the country gets, despite like it being a vanishingly small group of people in terms of the overall population who wants or believes in any of these things, like the more purely minoritarian and authoritarian our government gets, the more dire the need to vote for Democrats over all else becomes. So they, it's like, it really is, they got you totally straitjacketed by this. They got you coming and going here because it's just like the worse the Republicans get, the worse the Democrats are free to be because they're still not the Republicans. And like the, 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 the more dire the need to vote for them above all else becomes. They're like it's always now is not the time. You know, we just need to defeat this X threat in front of us because it represents, you know, such a, such a grotesque uh, ab abrogation of our rights and, you know, uh, you know, our rights as a dem democratic citizens in a 21st century country. Well, to bring it full circle, 
the Democrats have done the political version of Donald Trump's financial maneuverings. They're doing the political <laughs> version of you owe somebody a thousand dollars, you've got a problem. You owe somebody a billion dollars, they've got a problem. You lose so fucking much and so fucking bad, even when you win, that things get so dire and the stakes become so high that you turn to your voters who rightfully don't give a shit about you and go, what? well, what the fuck? You're not going to vote for me in the most important election ever? Why is it the most important election ever? What did you do to get us to that point? <laughs> yeah, it keeps just getting worse and worse. But it's getting good. It's getting you're well, not believing in them. Running, the running Joe Biden is the political equivalent of paying seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. I guess what I'm saying is like they, 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 and, and now we're facing down the fucking barrel of like I said, like, like probably as long as we're alive at the Supreme Court, barring some extraordinary. I mean, the Democrats have already said that they're not going to do anything about this, right? They couldn't right. even pretend yes. for a day that they were going yes. to do anything. They have explicitly said, we are, we are not going to do it. We're not going to stop it. We're not going to try to stop the nomination. We're, we're not going to vote, we're gonna vote against it, and that's it. And yeah, we're not going to yeah. back the court. We're not going to, 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 to uh, uh, declare Marbury v. Madison to be invalid. We're not going to eliminate judicial review. We're not going to do anything. So just it's going to be though. We're not gonna do anything. a far-right Supreme Court, no matter what. No matter you what the election vote, outcome though. is. you got to vote, Yeah. Or else what? The court gets worse? Vote. It becomes a 7-2 court? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess at this point they have to switch from defending it to attacking it, and now we're going to get it back. That, that's just how you flip it. Now we got to yeah, get it you know, back. We lost it. Now we get it back. The court is... You know, Thomas could die. The, yeah. yeah. The court is lost until the unlikely hero, President J.B. Pritzker, the captain of the Third American <laughs> Republic, uh, <laughs> brings us to 78 Supreme Court seats, and they're all formally disbarred Cook County attorneys. Let's go. <laughs> You know, but but what I mean is like, um, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't care no. if your rights are going to be taken away from you by this like revanchist right wing minority. They simply don't give a fuck. If they did give a fuck at all, they would behave differently. They would try to win. They would try to do anything about it. And it's the people who defend them the most are still the ones who are like the people at fault here are those that have lost faith in the Democratic Party by not voting for Clinton or simply just being critical of her when she was our presidential nominee. And it's just it's it's just always going to be the case of them. It's they're never at fucking fault here. And it's just it's you know what? It's just if you if you're angry about the situation that you find yourselves in now as a Democrat, we sent you a boat in 2016 and a fucking helicopter in 2020 and you didn't fucking want it. Enjoy drowning with the rest of us like that. That's that's the allegory that I keep going for here. It's just like any any possible a, a different path that's offered to them they shit all over it and the same group of voters that they regard as apparently decisive in every presidential election well okay if they're, if they're, if they're that important that like the, the Jill Stein voters are why Donald Trump is president well then shouldn't you try to like offer them something or get their vote if you need it that badly nope not going to do that just keep voting for us just keep fucking voting for us it's going to be a 9-1 Supreme Court eventually but you know like that that one like you know, the 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 one person that we have on there is just all the more reason we need to support them. I'm not. I like the idea that it's nine one because uh, the Supreme. That's all nine Eight conservatives. One, no, no. I like yeah. I like nine one better because in the future it's all nine conservative justices, and then the Democratic president uh, wins the vow to pack the court and adds a single seat. 